Yes, I am addicted to terabytes. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how I like to get my terabytes for cheaper. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Buy My Bits. And in today's video, I d thought about doing a tutorial on how to shuck a hard drive, but instead I wanted to just shuck this thing the wrong way and then talk about why I shuck external hard drives in the first place. Now, by definition, shucking an external hard drive is just removing the shell that it comes in and taking the bare drive and putting into your computer or your server. It may sound like kind of a weird thing to do, but believe me, there's a good reason for it. Take this. As an example, this is a Western Digital 8 terabyte external USB 3.0 hard drive. This thing plugs right into your computer, it pops up as an external drive, and you can use it just like any external hard drive would be used. But this thing only cost me, I think, around $139. It's 140 bucks for 8 terabytes of storage. That is a little ridiculous, especially because Western Digital Red 8 terabyte drives normally go for 270 to 280 or more dollars on average. So getting an 8 terabyte bare Western Digital Red drive for 140 bucks, that is what you call a deal. Now, I can't sit here and tell you why I think they do this. I don't know why the cells come into play. I don't know why you can get them cheaper than normally, uh, but I can tell you that it doesn't happen all the time. So if you do happen to find a cell where they're selling something like this for basically half of what a normal hard drive would cost, I would probably jump on it. This particular drive I purchased from Best Buy. I actually ordered it online, even though I could have went into the store and just bought them right there. But at the time when the sale was going on, I really just didn't feel like driving to Best Buy to do it. So sometimes vendors, particularly Best Buy, because that's where I seem to get the best deals, they'll, you know, maybe they overstock on them, maybe they want to clear some inventory out, I don't know. Randomly, they decide, hey, let's sell an excess of hard drives that we have for a heck of a lot cheaper than what the bare hard drive should go for. And that's where you get this. Comes completely capable of hooking up to any USB 3.0 port or 2.0 port for that matter, and you can use it really easily. And that's all good and well. Nothing against that whatsoever, but I have a server, I have needs, and I'm addicted to terabytes, so <laughs> I'm definitely gonna be shucking this today and throwing it in my Zeus server. And again, don't look at this video as a tutorial on how to shuck a drive, because uh, I don't plan on doing it the right way, because I'm, I'm just gonna throw this whole external ex enclosure away. And yes, there are tutorials out there on how to shuck it properly if you wanna maintain the plastic tabs inside to be able to put it back together in the future. But for today's video, I'm just gonna rip this thing apart. With my experience, and I've shucked a few of these before, with the Western Digital drives like this, the external USB drives, they usually come in Western Digital Red varieties. I've seen online that sometimes they don't come with the Western Digital Red, sometimes they come with you know maybe cheaper hard drives that Western Digital has to offer. So technically it is kind of a gamble. In fact, I found a Reddit post where it says, you know, even if you read online and you find, you know, other people have gotten the same exact drive and they've gotten a Western Digital Red, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a Red if you were to get one yourself. It just means that the chances are higher. And I wanted to say that because in reality, if I open this thing up and it has like a green drive in it or something else that's cheaper, I don't know if there is, I'm definitely going to be let down. Um, not saying I won't use it, but I will still be let down. But out of all the other hard drives that like this that I have shucked before, they all have been Western Digital Red, so I have pretty high hopes that it's going to be a red. Now to do this, of course, I do have a knife and I do have a set of screwdrivers here. I wasn't entirely sure which one I would need, but I do know that I will need a Torx screwdriver, so hopefully that should be in here somewhere. Looks like I got one more tab. Or maybe two more tabs. <sighs> so here you have it. 
an eight terabyte drive, not a Western Digital Red. So right here on camera is the first time I've ever experienced that. Not that I'm completely let down, but I really would have liked to see a red drive in here. Editing Jason here. Looks like after doing a little bit of research online, this is still technically a Western Digital Red drive. It just has a different label. These are referenced as white label drives. During my research, I found that some people had issues using this drive with normal SATA power cables. Something about a 3.3 reset voltage pin that was enabled on this drive that's not on normal drives. If this is true, you may need some additional modifications to your power cables in order to get the drive to spin up. And as another side note, I paid $129 for this drive, not $139. That is all. Continue. Just one of those things, right? I didn't really plan on returning it, taking it back. In fact, I've been sitting on this drive for a while, so probably outside of my uh, warranty as it is. I mean, my return policy as it is. Removing this little USB uh, adapter for the SATA port is pretty simple. Usually it's just one little screw, a regular Phillips head screwdriver. Take this screw out, pull this out, and boom, good to go. Now on the sides here, these are where you have the torque screws. These are a little bit different, so you will need to find something that's going to fit that. And that is not it. T8. Ooh, T8's pretty close, pretty close, but I think a T9 oh, is going to be better fit. Yes, T9 Torx, that is what you want. And just like that, I have an 8TB Western Digital white drive still going to use it throw it in zeus my unraid server uh, run it through a couple cycles of zeroing out the drive to see if there's any errors and uh, if all goes well it's going to be a double parity for my server I'm not actually gaining any capacity in my server this is more of just a protection on my part to run a double parity and make sure that if i do end up losing two drives while i'm rebuilding a parity for whatever reason this will be a backup so back to the original point, guys, look out for cells like this. If you want nice, cheap storage, this might be an option to look into. I would definitely recommend not going the same route I did when it comes to shucking the external enclosure, mainly because if you do it right, you can pretty much take these off, these little, these little plastic tabs here. You can push like a credit card or whatever onto each side and you can shuck this thing without actually breaking it. And if you're able to shuck it without breaking it and you realize it's not a red drive and that that's what you really wanted, then you could potentially return the whole thing. Again, I wasn't worried about that because I have no intentions of returning it. I'm gonna use this thing no matter what. I mean, $140 for an eight terabyte drive, that is just too good to pass up, no matter what color the drive is. So guys, look out for those cells. If you find anything like this that are Western Digital specific, whether it's in the four terabyte or a terabyte variant, definitely hit me up and underscore bite my bits on Twitter. I would love to hear about them. In fact, the last two times that I shucked drives like this was actually from Twitter people sending me links to the cells that they found. And then of course, I like to share those links with the rest of my followers. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe below. If you have any questions, of course, leave them down below as well and have yourself a good day.